we now have the most secure vehicle in all of Scrap Mechanic. Nobody could ever break into this vehicle if they wanted to. Uh, it just it wouldn't work. It's not possible. It's fantastic. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and one of the things I love about video games is really the immersion and really getting into the video game and feeling the realism, you know, and just feeling the the effect of the realism and just really experiencing like you're in fact in the game itself and really, you know, there and experiencing whatever your character is feeling. The one thing I love about today's build is that it's very immersive. So we actually have this lovely sort of door here to our house, um, to our house, to our, can I grab the block there to our house? We're just going to, we're just going to put some walls here to really feel immersed in this environment. There we go. Look at that. We've got a nice house. Oh, we need a roof on our house. Hold on. Very good. So you can see we have this lovely house here, uh, you know, very well designed, perfectly comfortable perfectly great house and we can hide everything we want in that house now the nice thing about scrap mechanic is we can do things like install locks on doors and there's really there's really no way for anybody to get into our area once we've installed a door and put a lock on it i mean it's really quite impossible for someone to do any sort of thing that would allow them to get into the house and so today we're going to look at the nine digit lock that uh, i actually made in a stream and that is of course actually it's ten digits it's one through one through nine plus a zero. Uh, but we're gonna look at this lock that I made during a stream and uh, really just kind of look at how it works in case you ever want to have something in Scrap Mechanic to protect your lovely house like this. So the lock is really simple. It has digits zero through nine and on those digits we have four individual sort of number blocks and each of these numbers gets put through this lovely little pulse generator. So when you click a number, when you hold the button, it only sends one pulse through the system. And then that pulse will trigger each of these number blocks. On each of these four bits for each stack, we're storing one of the number combinations. So for example, this stack here, uh, we'd have the number one, this one would be three, this one would be two, and this one would be four. And we're storing the number in binary just so it takes a little bit less space. And then that gets compared against these AND gates when we hit one of these buttons to determine if we have in fact solved the code. And as we go through each step through the code, you have four button presses. It'll check to see if you're getting the numbers right. And as soon as you get the numbers wrong, it triggers the error loop, which in turn will give you that red light and not open the door. And if we enter the number code correctly, so I believe it was one, three, two, four. Oh, okay, no, I and one. Okay, though, I'm out of sequence. There we go. One, three, two, four. And there we go. We can open the door and we can go inside our lovely house. We can close the door. No one can get in. And then, of course, we can hit that white button just to get out. And, and then we can close the door again. And we can't get back in until we enter that code. And then, of course, if we want to change the code, we can enter in one, three, two, four. Opens the door. And while the door is open, we can hit the black button which lets us know we are now recording a new code and we can go, let's say 9870. And now it's recorded the new code. And so one, three, two, four, no longer works, but 9870 will work to open the door. So it's a really, really awesome sort of, I don't know, project, I guess. Obviously with the ability to destroy blocks or edit connections or anything like that, it doesn't exactly make it proof. Hopefully at some point in time with the survival mode, we'll have something that allows us to protect blocks from other players, you know, and protect connections. I know the devs teased at an object that looks like it might do that, but uh, I'm not sure if we'll ever really see it or not. But it would be cool to have something that actually stops people from changing connections and manipulating the, uh, the other people's creations. But in case you want to have a really cool lock, I know there's a million different ways to do it. If you go on the workshop and you type in combination lock, there are thousands of designs, like at least hundreds of them. There are a lot of different designs and we're going to look at a few of them, but uh, this is actually not as complicated as you would think. All you really have to do is store the number, compare the number against what buttons are being pressed and use these bits at the top here to go through the sequence. As you go through each sequence, if the comparison is correct, it triggers the on bit at the very end. And if the comparison is wrong, it triggers the error bit. You don't actually have to check if the comparison is right. You just have to check if the comparison's wrong. As long as it's right, it can keep going on to the next bit. And then in terms of resetting, whenever the bit is open to let us know that the door is open, then we can hit this black button to reset the system. And this just simply goes to an AND gate that says if the door is closed, you can't 
like reset the system. So it's very, very simple. I know a lot of people have been seeing the logic challenges and trying to understand how they all work. And really, when you think of anything in logic, all you have to do is break it down to the very basic steps. What's the first thing you want to accomplish? And so when we were building this, I said, okay, the first thing we want to accomplish is storing each of the four numbers. And once we've stored the numbers, then we need to actually have a way of comparing them to what's being pressed. And then we have to have a way of sequencing through what's being pressed. So at each point, it'll only check this comparison and then it'll check this one and so on and so forth. And then you have the error loop and then you're done. So it's actually not nearly as complicated as you would think to do, at least in this case. Now, of course, with everything you do in logic, there are always a million other ways to do it. And so we're going to look at a couple other creations. Now, these other creations, I haven't spawned before. I've never actually tried them, so I have no idea how they're going to work. And of course, the first one is blue flame with a very compact lock. You can see much more compact than the one I've built there and uh, I have no idea how this is supposed to work so what does this say uh, it's a very small digit 4 pin code lock okay it's 4x4 keypad 16 to the power of 4 65,536 combinations the display indicates how many digits you have entered it turns red when the code is entered wrong and turns green when the lock is open okay so this you'd actually hook into something with these red and green gates at the back gotcha Okay, so weld it to a wall or other service, connect the red and green logic gate to your device, enter a code, enter your code to close, hit the bright red button to reset opening code, hit your current button, hit the... Oh, okay, cool. So it's like kind of like a hotel safe. So we can go one, three, four, whatever. Okay, so I entered a code. Let's hook up some lights here so we can tell if this is open or not. This is actually really well done. I, I like how compact this design is. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Uh, so this top light will be the green gate. This is very confusing though to wire up. And this one will be that gate. Okay, so the combination was this, right? Okay, good. So I can press the green button now to reset the combination to let's say this. Okay, that's cool. So now the combination is this. And if I get that wrong... Oh, oh I have to hit the red button to, oh, to lock it. Okay, gotcha. Why is my red light not indicating? Didn't you say the red light was supposed to indicate? Well, regardless, it's still really... Did I hook this up wrong, maybe? Did I? No, I thought I hooked it up right. Am I crazy? I don't know. I'm crazy. Regardless, it's still a really cool lock. I mean, it doesn't really matter that the red light turns on or off, but uh, I hope I didn't screw it up. Maybe I screwed it up. You know, I can actually see this getting extremely useful if we get to the point where the devs add it so that you can't actually manipulate other people's creations and you have to actually try and break them down. Uh, this is obviously much more compact than the massive monstrosity of a room that I made. And you know, if we have a vehicle that just needs a key lock on it, for example, to prevent us getting in. So let's take one of my Humvees, for example. And you know, normally we can just open uh, this door here, like so, or the driver's door even, but let's, let's just install the lock. And you can see it's hardly noticeable. Um, we need it on the driver's side door here. Yeah, driver's side door. This is military grade locks here. And then we'll just enter in a code. It's super secure. And now we can enter in that code again. Perfect. See, we can get in the door. And then we'll have this hooked into the red button, which I believe closes the door. Uh, red button. Okay, red button. Perfect. And that's the three button. And look at that. Problem solved. You can see it's hardly noticeable on our Humvee and uh, it's really just quite a, a great way to keep people out of your vehicles especially if the devs again get to the point where you can protect your own stuff um, it helps with stability obviously driving around these corners and really really good now of course my lock system would be the exact same way uh, mine in fact requires you to use a trailer and you have all your connections hooked into the trailer and then of course you drag your locks around with you we now have the most secure vehicle in all of scrap mechanic nobody could ever break into this vehicle if they wanted to uh it just it wouldn't work it's not possible it's fantastic we can go anywhere that any other vehicle would go uh without really any major issues we're having a bit of problem steering but that's okay that's to be expected with such a secure vehicle um it does kind of look in fact like a parade float but we're going to get going over here and we're going to check out one more awesome lock. All right, so the last creation I want to look at is a lock by Brent Batch. Now, I'm not sure. I believe he made this a while ago. Uh, of course, I'm only getting around to making a combination lock now. Brent Batch is another crazy master of logic. And of course, he did blueprint edit or glitch weld. I'm not sure which one he did to do a bunch of this. But there's sensors with gates directly on top of them. And I'm assuming a bunch of this is double overlapped gates as well. 
But regardless, it's a relatively compact lock, again, would really enhance our vehicle. But uh, I don't really know how it works, so we're just going to read the instructions. So, 14 long sequence of data. Well, then, anywhere you want, check. Connect the output gate to the door. Okay, so I'm going to connect it to a light. Said so the one going to the controller. Okay, that's the one going to the controller. Light. Okay, check. Uh, enter in your code. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I entered in my code. Put blocks on the lit gates on the left. Okay, so like this. Like that, like that. I think this is how he actually stores the code. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems like each of these are 4-bit binary. He's got 16 numbers, which would be appropriate for 4-bit. That's 0 through 15. And I think this is him storing the code combination using the sensors that are blueprint edited into there. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I think that would actually be your combination. And then, of course, we'd have to cover this up so people can't see it. But I'm not sure entirely. But what's the next instruction? Press the reset, the first one next to the input button. So I'm assuming that's this, this brown button. Okay. Is that reset? And now unlocking, press a code, and then press the leftmost button. So if I press the leftmost button, it unlocks. Or is that a test button? Is it this? Maybe that's the unlock button. Okay, let's try it. One, two, three, four. This is the wrong code, I know, but I want to see if it unlocks for me. Does it unlock? No, it doesn't. Is this a test button? Still a test button. Okay, so let's try the real code. One, two, well, let's, you know, reset. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Unlock. Awesome. That is a wicked lock. That is incredibly complex. You would, why would you ever need a 14 bit combination lock or 14 number combination lock? At hexadecimal. The only thing I would say, Brent, if you ever feel like going back and fixing this, is having a, a number counting display so you know which number you're on would be stellar because I, I can't even remember how many numbers I count half the time. And then you're sitting there wondering if you're done or not. And just having a, a light that let, lights up to let you know that you didn't get the number combination right would be sweet. But in all else opinion, I think these are actually great creations. Of course, like I said, immersion and uh, really experiencing the game, definitely going to need some lock trailers driving around. I will upload my terrible lock to the workshop. Obviously, uh, Brent's from a year ago is much better, as well as Blue Flames. Both locks are really a lot better, but I feel like uploading it anyways just to show you guys how I did it. If you're ever curious about how this stuff works, uh, you know, it's, it's always cool stuff to look at, and I really appreciate the logic creations, even though I know in Scrap Mechanic they don't really have a lot of use, but I think maybe at some point in time we could find some cool uses for some logic stuff like this. So make sure you guys let me know in the comments down below if you have any other cool logic creations you would like to see, or if you want to see any other types of like sort of, you know, showcase builds where maybe I build something and we show off some of the viewer creations as well that are similar, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, hit that like button and that subscribe button while you're at it. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.